Thank you for keeping us company. We continue with Entrepreneurship uh, Tuesday. And right about now, we want to talk about matters, HR, job market, and the, the training. I'm speaking to Josephine Irungo. She's a lead consultant and CEO with Pristin HR Engine Limited. Send in your comments to our social media platforms at Y254 channel. My handle is at Murani Hillary. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Good morning, Hillary. It's good to have you here. Good to have you. Thank you for having me here. No, as I was telling, before we began this show, yes. uh, I told our audience we'll yep. be talking about the HR, uh -huh. job market, and the training. Uh -huh. And now with the Pristine Engine, tell us how do you go about training? What are some of the requirements? If I'm looking for a job, what is it that I should have? Mm -hmm. Yes, and maybe the programs that you enroll your people. Thank you for having me, Hilary. Allow me to uh, reiterate on the introduction. My name is Josephine Irungu, lead consultant mm -hmm. and uh, founder with Preston HR Engine. Mm -hmm. Preston HR Engine Limited is a HR consulting firm. We deal with matters related to HR and we enable organization in matters related to HR. Mm -hmm. These services that we offer are trainings uh, uh, to, uh, to answer your question. We do uh, lots and lots of recruitment. Mm -hmm. We do human resource audits where we get into organization and audit their departments, where we audit their systems and their policies. We also de le do legal advisories. Mm -hmm. And in Preston HR Engine, we have many uh, partners and associates. Hence, I don't work alone. I have a team and a mm -hmm. team of uh, very critical and uh, uh, professionals. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, when it comes now to training, uh, we do different kinds of training. Mm -hmm. We do both open house and in-house. Mm -hmm. Open house is where we um, get to work on a training and we sell it out to the market where organizations as well as individuals mm -hmm. get to buy it and uh, we host in a different, uh, I mean, uh, outside our office or outside the company's premises, for example, in a hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, in-house training is where we go to organizations and train their staff. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, team building. Uh, customer service or customer experience right. and uh, also team building is a training people mm -hmm. find team building as if it's just PE but team building is a training mm -hmm. and after here I'm headed for a team building as well Wow yes so yeah those are some of the services but that we offer uh, I'm, I'm interested in the recruitment yeah. and a bit of law because mm -hmm. I understand there's so much that uh, calls for the HR system to ensure that the people that have been employed are they paid well? Is this an organization they, they want to work for? Yeah. Are they, uh, is it well functionable? As in, is the employee yeah. able to maybe claim for something if it uh -huh. happens? So how do you go about this? Okay, let me answer on the recruitment. Recruitment, yes, we do offer recruitment where we place talent into organizations. Mm -hmm. So we start the process where an organization will find a need. For example, they need to hire a, a manager in the organization, for mm -hmm. example, a finance manager. So they reach out to Preston HR Engine and they tell us this is what we want and what we require, we require a job description for that particular uh, role, the finance manager role, mm -hmm. just an example. So we get to understand their need. That is the first thing that we want to do, to understand the need of the organization and the kind of the talent that they want. So when we now position the vacancy or the, we advertise it to the market, mm -hmm. we now match the people who apply or the candidates who apply to the position mm -hmm. with what the organization wants. So we match the skill in the market with what the organization or the employer wants. Mm -hmm. And now we place, we do uh, the interviews. Uh, we now, on our side, we do the interviews, we shortlist, and then we send the successful candidates to the employer to this particular organization that we are hiring for. Mm -hmm. And then they do the interviews on their side, and of course now they get to hire. Mm -hmm. When it comes to matter of law, law is very diverse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are very many kinds of uh, labor laws that are there. Right. Yeah, the one that people, the act that people know is the Employment Act 2007, revised 2012. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, there are others. We have Fair Administrative Act. We have WIBA Act, mm -hmm. we have uh, Occupational Safety and Health. The WIBA Act is the Work Injury Benefit Act. Mm -hmm. We have NSSF, NHIF. There are very many labor laws, mm -hmm. yes. Of which I would, I would love you to elaborate on each because I know of our people, yeah. like for an example, uh -huh. I have been recruited by a certain company. Uh -huh. I have gone there, I have sent some documents, yeah. uh, say the contract, yeah. but I do not know clearly this, yes. doc this contract stipulates some some uh, see things that I may need from the company mm. in case I fall sick, mm. maybe I will mm. be rendered useless, mm. you know, mm. that kind of a thing. Then okay. how, uh, how now do I get to know the contract that I signed yes. is protecting me wholly? Okay. Uh, the Act, the Employment Act allows, a con they, there are contents that need to be there. 
mm -hmm. in every employment contract. Right. There are contracts that need to be there. Of course, your name, the location, the gender, whether you are male or female, um, the job title, which uh, designation are you hired for. Mm -hmm. Of course, the job description is the statutory. Uh, it needs to define also the um, terms of employment, whether you're on fixed contract, whether it's an open contract. Mm -hmm. And a fixed contract is where it has a start and an end. Yeah, a start date and year and an end uh, date and year. Mm -hmm. uh, it has, of course, the terms and conditions. It has your remuneration, when you're supposed to be paid by when, mm -hmm. which date of the month. Mm -hmm. And uh, in case of injury, how should you report? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, the contract should be able to have all those clauses that will lead you or guide you as an employee mm -hmm. to a point that uh, you're not going to be like you have signed and you don't know what you're signing. It's your, of course, it's your obligation and mandate to read before you sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's not limited because you find the acts are there in the public domain. So mm -hmm. it would be very good also as an employee to research on what on your rights. What mm -hmm. is it that is out there right. that maybe the employee forgot mm -hmm. or. Uh, just <laughs> did yeah, not want ignorance. to include exactly, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Because of course, ignorance is no is no defence, right? right? So true. in case you are injured, there is a guideline from the WIBA Act how it's supposed to how it's supposed to be done, mm -hmm. where an employ an employer should report the incident mm -hmm. because there are those injuries that could be you are incapacitated for a few days or you are incapacitated totally. You are not able to go back to your the role, mm -hmm. yeah. For mm -hmm. example, if you are a machine operator and you chop off your hand, you may end up not being a machine operator in that organization. Right. So the law requires, or the WIBA requires you to be redeployed somewhere else, not to be terminated. Uh, yeah? yeah, exactly. Not to be terminated. Yes. So there are other uh, injuries, like uh, that's not even an injury fatal. I mean, mm -hmm, you, mm -hmm. it's an injury, it's an accident that happened and we lost the staff. So there are guidelines on how to go about it. If you lost the staff, that report should be now reported mm -hmm. to the Occupational Safety and Health. Mm -hmm. That's now a different act as well. A different act. Yes. Just before you move to that, yes. the, the accident that occurs, yes. is it at site or maybe I was home? It could be either. Okay. It could be either. On your way to work, mm -hmm. accident occurred. All right. Yes. And what if of course, I'm the employer... Leave? Of, uh, if you're on leave, of course, the employer has to be notified. You're not at work, but you're on leave, yes, but you're still in the payroll. I'm still an employee of yeah, that company. Yeah, you're still an employee of the company. Okay. For yes. It's so only that it's not I'm, really I'm a liability. I'm an employee of that company. Yes, but it is not really like an liability okay. because you are not at work. Uh, okay. So that means there will be some processes yes. to go through. Yes. So what uh, good employers should do or what employers should do, it's always good to ensure staff. Okay. Yes, to ensure stuff. It's not there in the WIBA Act that you must ensure, mm -hmm. but it's, go it's there that you must compensate, All right. especially if the accident happened mm -hmm. in, your, uh, in your line of duty. All right. Yes. So the other act you had started talking about? Now, I was talking about now reporting the matter to the Occupational Safety and Health. The mm -hmm. act requires that if it is a fatal accident, then it has to be reported within 24 hours. Right. But if it is this other accident where maybe you are given sick leave, you're not able to work for a few days or even weeks, mm -hmm. then that needs to be reported within uh, not more than seven, week, seven days. Not more than seven days. Mm -hmm. But of course, every organization is supposed to be efficient enough to report every accident like immediately. You don't have to wait that an, an accident has happened on a, to an employee like today, being Tuesday, mm -hmm. and you're reporting, you're reporting it next week, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. You get? So yeah. again, it calls for every organization to be efficient mm -hmm. on uh, reporting such matters whenever they happen. All right. Yes. Now, uh, in, in line of the recruiting, Yes. Have you had challenges with the, the group of people who come as, uh, say, you were recruiting, say, accountants? Yeah. Have you had challenges in what the company wants yes. versus what the applicants have? Yes, we have had, we, we have had challenges and challenges are there. Mm -hmm. For example, the budget, mm -hmm. yeah, the salary budget. Right. If an organization is, uh, for example, um, has budgeted to uh, pay that uh, position 100000 mm -hmm. and what is in the market, same skills, same responsibilities, same qualifications. Mm -hmm. uh, we get candidates that are way above. Right. Yeah, because um, a role will be asking for a minimum of maybe a degree uh, for an account position. An example, maybe a minimum of bachelors of commerce mm -hmm. or in finance, NCPK. Someone has to be registered, work experience of five years mm -hmm. and all that. And then the budget, maybe it's 100,000. Yeah. But we find what is in the market or the candidates who are applying mm -hmm. who match the job Mm -hmm. Everything, the qualification they have done, the, they have achieved still uh, on their previous uh, designations. But we find now the salary is higher. And they know yes, about so, it. And they know about it. <laughs> and they know about so it. So demand. that's m the major challenge that we normally find when we are, uh, 
when we are recruiting for when you are doing the recruitment mm -hmm. yeah, and, uh, especially uh, the budgeting now how do you advise advise the, your clients or the companies that they want to employ in terms of now you have found this and yes. this is what they want but yeah. you cannot yeah how do they reply to this how do they adjust or they just uh, stay the, what they want oh uh, it will depend mm -hmm. of course with their financial <laughs> with their capacity mm -hmm. there are those who are just right. giving an example of 100 that those who are just if a uh, majority of the candidates that we are meeting or those who are applying for the job are mm -hmm. quoting 150 right. so we find an organization will adjust from 100 to around 120 okay. and then the 30 they will compensate on other benefits because again it's not only the salary but mm -hmm. you'll find an organization may offer 100 but their benefits are good okay. it's only that now a candidate who is getting 150 cannot really take a road deal because mm -hmm. of the benefits but it's all uh, mainly it's all about the benefits more than the salary because the salary can uh, you can be on a hundred thousand for three years but mm -hmm. the benefits are good for you for example sure. the medical mm -hmm. for example the bonus mm -hmm. if the company does very well the bonus can surpass your salary mm -hmm. yeah and, and before you tell me about now the pristine uh, the customer relation and yes. everything else around it yeah uh, have you had challenges with the the recruitment now you're doing uh, this person has come fresh from campus mm. and the company wants this kind of a person mm. and this person truly they know something yes though they may not have that experience yes but also there's a question of the curriculum that we have uh -huh. do we have a difference of what is taught in school and what is in the job market yes there's a very big difference what is taught, taught in school because that's more on theory mm -hmm. because uh, what is in the market is practical mm -hmm. yeah and so, it's reality mm -hmm. and uh, the market is changing the curriculum is not changing mm -hmm. You get uh, what, no, what, I mean? what is being done about it? Um, what I would advise is let the people who are leaving school get more of uh, practicals in the uh, in the uh, internships. Right. Let them do more of internships mm -hmm. because you find attachment is part of the curriculum, but internship is after someone has graduated or you have finished your course. Mm -hmm. So get more internship, apply for internships so that you get to acquit yourself with what is in the market, mm -hmm. in your industry and in your profession, mm -hmm. and you perfect it before you get now back to the job. Because right now most organizations are closing down. You mm -hmm. get, you see. So you find uh, there are those who are even cutting down on the uh, wages. Mm -hmm. So they want entry. A candidate or a staff on an entry level mm -hmm. but now what we look on our side is whether the person has gone has got experiences from the internship sure. not really experience in terms of on, on the job okay yes all right now tell me about the pristine you dealing with people and everyone yes. out here want to wants to be an entrepreneur yeah. no one wants to be employed by someone else <laughs> I, I went to school i did this i um, in this yeah. field but i want to have my own house yes. now you have your own company mm -hmm. you want to be your own employer mm -hmm. but also you're dealing with other people mm. now how do you ensure customer relation as you wind up how do you ensure customer relation and mm -hmm. uh, sustaining this customer that yes. tomorrow they will still want to be with you how yes. do you go about that i go about it by feedback i mm -hmm. offer feedback mm -hmm. I believe in feedback and I believe in um, starting the process from A to Z. Mm -hmm. I don't want to start the process from A and then I leave it at J. Mm -hmm. I'll work with an organization or even the candidates who are looking for employment, I work with them from A to Z. So if it is, for example, recruitment, we'll recruit from, we'll start with them and still when they now hire the staff, we'll keep checking on the staff because now that's our candidate on our side. Mm -hmm. We'll keep checking on them if they're finding any challenges. If these are challenges that they have not talked to the employer, we find a way of notifying the employer mm -hmm. Not necessarily getting like directly to say this particular employ employee that we brought has said one, two, three, four, no. But mm -hmm. it's working with both the employer as well as the employee because mm -hmm. not the employee is our client. Okay. Yes. And the employee also remains on our database. We require this particular skill maybe mm -hmm. near to come for another organization. Mm -hmm. Yes. I have to put you on a hot seat right now with this final <laughs> question. <laughs> really? Many times you've gone on interviews. Yes. And you find so and so, Akushinda, <clears throat> but <clears throat> Alipewa. Do you, do you people, <laughs> do you people, we speak of Kenya yes. corruption, uh -huh. do you speak of you people pushing for an agenda and say, I'm doing recruitment of 50 guys uh -huh. and you need 20, but I will push for one because I know them. Uh, do the HR Christine. do that because we... I wouldn't Question. say HR. Let me talk on, on my, about myself mm -hmm. and of course on behalf of Preston. We believe in honesty and integrity. Right. We don't believe in corruption. You don't push for someone. I don't push for someone, even if it's a relative. Mm -hmm. And I'm, say it, I'm saying it out there. Mm -hmm. It's all about, because we require to position the skills that are required so that also the society can benefit. The company cannot shut down. 
yeah not because i know a hr in an organization and i'm having a sister who uh, who needs employment now yeah. i fix it out no mm -hmm. and even the people who reach out to preston they tell us please try and find job for us yes when we get a vacancy that matches your position well and good that we will do mm -hmm. or rather we now redeploy if you are we are looking like in an admin then we can look for maybe an office, mm -hmm. uh, an of, a front office or something, but not pushing for an organization you're in admin mm -hmm. and you want an accounting job because mm -hmm. I know a HR or a CEO in all that right. organization. So it's all about morals mm -hmm. and I think honesty and integrity. Awesome. I'm giving you less than 30 seconds. Yes, please. That's your camera. Uh -huh. Final recommendations and what you'd want Kenyans to know. I want Kenyans to know that Preston HR Engine is an organization that uh, will enable your organization in matters related to HR. And you can find us on the website. We have a website, www.prestinehrengine.com, uh, as well as the social media and the Facebook. Our numbers are 0711-367-320. All right. Thank you so much for coming, Josephine, yes. and uh, sharing your uh prowess in this particular area of uh, job employment and uh, recruitment yes. we appreciate so much wish you all the very thank best thank you very and much back home thank you so much for keeping us a company barry moore is up next to another segment today you will learn from entrepreneurship we will keep it y254 my name is Dereva Hiller. she has been my guest josephine irongo she's a leads consultant ceo with pristine hr engine limited thank you so much see you in a bit thank you